Um, so hello everybody. So uh, for today's lecture, uh, we will you know uh, have a, a tutorial about uh, how how to use this software. It's actually a programming language. So Ample or the AMPL, the full name is a mathematical programming language. Okay, and uh, we take the first uh, you know uh, digits of each word. That's how we uh, got the, the name AMPL, okay? So it is a, you know, an LG break, uh, breaking modern, a modeling language, okay? Uh, this, uh, you know, it is a programming language, but it is mainly used to, uh, to solve optimization problem, okay? It's not a general uh, programming language, okay? It is designed to uh, solve optimization problem. And there are different types of optimization problems. Uh, for instance, linear programming problem, a mixed integer linear programming problem, nonlinear programming, um, and the mixed integer nonlinear programming. Okay? So we'll mainly use the first two. two okay? For instance, uh, the optimal power flow that we'll be learning in our next lecture, that's uh, you know, mathematically, it is a uh, linear programming problem, okay? And also uh, for unit commitment. So unit commitment is a model used for power system there had a uh, resource uh, scheduling. So that is a mixed integer linear programming problem. So mixed integer means the variables, uh, you have the continuous variables, you also have the uh, integer variables. Okay. So we will talk more about that uh, you know, when we learn unit commitment, maybe in another uh, week or two. Okay. And also this uh, AMPL uh, programming language, uh, so it is like a modeling, a modeling language. Okay. It just uh, describes the uh, optimization problem. Okay. It shows the uh, the formulation of the optimization problem, okay? And uh, how to solve the optimization problem that we will be, you know, that will uh, need a third party solver, okay? And uh, Ample supports you know, many uh, third party solvers, okay? Uh, you know, and also for solvers, uh, some are designed for uh, LP uh, and MR LP problems. Okay, some solvers that are designed to solve NLP, uh, you know, all MR NLP problems. Okay, so here you see a list of you know uh, solvers. Okay. Some of them, uh, you know, they are uh, open source, they're free to use. Some of them they are commercial uh, software, commercial solvers. For instance, this uh, the CPLEX. And the Groovy, they are you know, widely used uh, solvers for uh, LP problem and the MR LP problem. Okay. All right. So you know, when, you know, when we talk about optimization problem, so you know, to use uh, Ample to solve an optimization problem, we need two uh, major steps. The first step is the modeling part. Okay, basically, uh, we need first of all we need to formulate the uh, the problem. You know, we, we need to create a formulation to describe the problem we start. Uh, we need to study. Okay, and uh, then after the modeling part is done, we need to you know solve solve the problem. Okay? And to solve the problem, we need some solver. Basically. Uh, when we say solver, is it you know it is actually uh, like a, a library, a, a routine that is already uh, written by some other uh, people, you know, and uh, different solvers they may implement different mathematical algorithms, and also uh, for optimization problem, we you know we need to know this concept optimality gap. Okay, so optimality gap. It is a measure uh, you know, indicating how much the reported solution may deviate away from the optimal solution. Okay. 
you know, for a small problem, we can easily find the best solution. Right? But uh, you know, if the problem is very complex, for instance, a problem that has uh, you know ten thousand variables to uh, twenty thousand uh, constraints, then you know it's possible. You know, it's it, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to obtain the best solution. Okay? Um, so, uh, you know, if we cannot find the best best solution, then the solver will just report the, uh, you know, the best uh, the, the the best solution it finds. Okay? It may not be the, uh, you know, the global optimal solution. Okay? So the, this optimality gap actually measures the quality of the reported solutions. Okay. Then that means we desire small gap. Small gap, uh, no, a, a gap of zero means what? Means the reported solution is the best solution. Okay, you cannot find a better solution. Okay, and then a gap, you know, practically uh, for many practical uh, problems, uh, we you know we we cannot find a, a solution with zero gap. Okay, then we would prefer a solution with a smaller gap, right? Small, smaller gap typically means, uh, you know, uh, typically means the, the, that solution is pretty close to the uh, best solution, okay? But, and a solution with a large gap means this solution could be very far away from the actual, the, uh, the optimal solution, the best, uh, best solution. And we can have two gaps. One is the absolute gap. So it would be just uh, the solution you find minus uh, the, the bond. So you actually, you don't know the uh, optimal solution, but you can find uh, a bond for that optimal solution. For instance, if you are minimizing a problem, okay, let's say this is the objective uh, you know, value access. Maybe the optimal solution, uh, let's say this is the, you know, the, the solution that, the currently find best solution, right? But for this, uh, but and then you all can also find a bond. Okay, so this is your uh, x star is your current find best solution. Okay, uh, and then you can also find a bond. Okay, in other words, uh, the actual optimal solution won't uh, be better than won't be lower than this bond. Okay, but you don't, but you don't know. Where the actual optimal solution locates, it you know, it will be somewhere within this range. Okay. Then we we can then we just say the gap is just the difference between these two values, the absolute value, uh, the absolute value of the difference between these two um, you know, numbers, and uh, we can also use uh, a you know, relative gap. So basically, it's just the absolute gap divided by the uh, bond. Okay. okay, now let's look at uh, you know, a simple example. So this is a very simple linear programming problem. We minimize X, okay? And we also know X, you know, it is subject to this constraint. It is greater than or equal to negative 1.5 and less than or equal to three, right? So apparently, you know, the, the solution is just uh, negative 1.5, okay? So how do we solve this problem in Ample? So this is a sample code, okay? So let me, let, let's go over this uh, you know, simple code. So this, so the, this, this pond is just to, to say this line is commented out, okay? And this reset is it, just to clear the memory uh, for ample, okay? so if some variables data are saved in memory uh, for ample, then this will clear those memory. Okay, and uh, this is how you define declare a variable. You just say var. Reporting in progress. So I need to mute all of you, unless you have a question, you can unmute. Okay. 
So this is how we uh, define, you know, de declare a variable. Okay? This is the syntax. And this is just the variable name. You, know, you can use any name you like. And uh, to end this line, you, you must put a semicolon here. Okay? Otherwise, it will automatically connect to the next, uh, next line. Okay? And uh, here, uh, you, you know, for ample, uh, you must define the objective function. You either minimize something or you maximize some function. For this example, we minimize this, uh, this objective, uh, objective function. And this function is just uh, x. So we minimize x. And this OBJ is just uh, the, uh, the name for the objective function. You can use any, any name, okay? You can use any name. You can put a cost, uh, revenue, uh, you know, uh, or time, effort, you know, whatever name you like. You also need this, uh, this uh, comma here, this column here. Okay. And we also need to define constraints you know, for, uh, you know, uh, for most optimization problems, they, they have, uh, you know, they are subject to some constraints. Okay. So you need to uh, define the constraints. Okay. And this is the syntax subject to, okay. so the, this means this is a constraint, and this is a constraint name. You can put you know, whatever uh, name you like, okay? and you also need a column here. Then you, you say negative 1.5 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3, semicolon. Okay? Then we are done with the, the first step. We are done with the modeling part. Okay? And the next is when. Now, after we uh, formulate the problem, okay, after we, uh, you know, we finish the modeling of the problem, we need to, to solve the problem. Okay? To solve the problem, uh, Ample cannot solve the problem, but Ample can uh, call some solver to solve the problem. Okay? So they, these two, this line option solver uh, is to call a solver. Okay? So Groovy is one solver. Uh, you can use you know, other solvers like this Minos, Cplex, okay? and there are you know, other solvers like Nitro, uh, you know, you know, all of these different solvers. Some, you know, some of these solvers are already uh, available uh, from the Blackboard. You know, once you download the sof software, you will see some solvers. We can go over those solvers uh, shortly. And then uh, you can, and also for different solvers, they, they have different uh, um, parameters. You, know. you need to uh, uh, pre specify some parameters. Okay? If you don't do that, then they will use the default parameters. For instance, here we can say we can set the MIP gap to zero. And we can also set a time limit to 90. Uh, the unit is a second. Okay? This, this just means uh, if the, uh, the server cannot find the optimal solution within 90, 90 seconds, it will just, uh, you know, it will just uh, terminate the program after 90 seconds and report the, you know, the current uh, find best solution. Okay, but if you know the solver finds the the finds the optimal solution with zero gap, uh, then it will also stop. So we we can set a gap to be zero, but for you know many um, practical large scale problems, we often we, we need to set a non zero gap here. So let's let me uh, let's open the solver. So I assume all of you. You know, have downloaded uh, the uh, Ample uh, software from Blackboard. Okay, so for instance, you know, my computer is a Windows-based computer. So I, I downloaded this zip file. I just uh, you know unzip. Then I this is you know, what I got after I uh, unzip this uh, Ample uh, software. This file. 
So there is an RDE here, the first folder, uh, AMPL RDE, ample RDE. You can uh, you know, go into inside this folder and click this one. This will be the RDE. If you use it a lot, you can you know, create a desktop shortcut, send it to desktop. Uh, desktop you know, shortcut. Okay. So this is the RDE. Okay. So I, you know, I also provide uh, you know, a few examples. Actually. Uh, all the codes for the eight examples that we will go over uh, here, here today, they are already available on Blackboard. You can download them. So, and also see, this is uh, the first example we just went over. Okay. So how do we run this uh, code file? Okay. Uh, so there is a naive, naive way. So let, Naive is, is just, you just tap them one by one. Say, just tap reset, semicolon, and then you define the variable, right? And you also, then you define the, the objective function. And then you need to define the constraint. Okay, and then you specify which server you want to use. Let's use Groovy. Okay, and then we can use the default parameters. We can then we click solve. You see, it will tells us what is the optimal objective value, and we are already done after we you know click this solve, and we can display the 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 variable, what is the optimal solution for X? You display X, then you see X is uh, equal to negative uh, 1.5, okay? So this is just a naive way to, uh, you know, to implement, uh, to solve this example one. You know, a, a much more efficient way is you put all of these codes in a file, in a dot .mod file, okay? So how do you create uh, this? Start mod file. You can uh, on your left hand side this window. You just right click. There's a new file. You know, you can you can click uh, something. Let's let's say in class example. Okay. Then you can type you know, all the code here. Let me just copy it here. Okay, so how do we run this code file? So the command is, uh, you can, it's model, model, and the, your file name, your code file name, mod, okay? So you just put this model space and the, then your uh, code file name. And also don't forget to add the appendix dot mod here, okay? And also you, you must include this semicolon. And then you click enter. You see it solves the problem and it also reports the optimal solution. Okay. Um, so any uh, question for this uh, example? Okay. Now, then let's look at the next example. So, uh, example two is uh, similar to example one. The only difference here is we add we add a one a restriction on the variable x. So here we see x is a non-negative number, okay, a non-negative variable. So how do we you know ensure x is a non-negative uh, number? So we can ensure this. I just put here, you see, you see my, uh, uh, my uh, screen, right? 
So here, you see, when we define this variable, when we declare this variable, so this just means X is a continuous variable and it has no restriction. But if we want to say it is non-negative, you can simply put greater than or equal to zero. Okay, you can just do it like this. Right? Then what is the optimal solution for this one? Because X is non-negative, so it cannot be negative one point five, right? So now the the uh, the optimal solution would be X uh, to be one, the, uh, zero. And the objective function, the optimal objective value would also be there. So you can you know, use the same command and solve it, you see? Now the optimal solution for X is zero, okay? Oh, one more thing. So you know, instead, of you, you, instead of using model here, you can also use include. You can also put include this works in the same way as model example the mod okay so it also also solves the problem okay let's look at uh, the third one so uh, for the third example uh, we, we say x is an integer number right so by default, X is a continuous number, a continuous variable. Okay? But now we want to uh, restrict X to be uh, an integer variable. So this can be simply done by uh, put, uh, yeah, sorry. So you can just add this uh, word, integer, when you declare a variable. Then what is the optimal solution for this uh, problem? Negative one. Yeah. So now the optimal solution for this problem should for x it should be negative one. Let's solve it. You see now the optimal solution for x is negative one. Okay, all right. Uh, so in example four, uh, I do not define X as, a, a, as an integer variable. I want to define X as a binary variable. So what is a binary uh, variable? It just means this variable can only be either one or zero, right? So you know, very similar to example three, we well, here we instead of uh, use, uh, using integer, we just say binary. Okay, we just say binary. So this will, you know, restrict x x to be either one or zero. Okay, then we can solve this problem again. Apparently, the optimal solution should be uh, zero for x. Okay, so I didn't type it again. I can just. Uh, uh, use the up arrow on your keyboard. On your keyboard, you, you just click the up arrow. It will show up. Okay. Then you click, you hit enter. Okay, so you see the optimal solution now is uh, there for X because we define X as a binary variable. Okay. Um, so next example would be a little bit complex. So do you have any questions so far? Yes. Yes. Oh, how did I do that? You see here, um, this one, this will cl uh, clean the, the window, the screen. You just, just click it. Okay, all right. Uh, any other uh, questions? Okay, Let, let's move on and look at the, uh, the next example. Okay. So in, in this example, as you can see, 
we want there it's a two variable uh, maxi, uh, maximization problem. Okay, uh, and it is subject to uh, some constraints, and also we are restricting uh, the two variables to be non-negative. Okay, so this you know this is what we we learned from uh, undergraduate studies. So we'll talk about the how how we solve it manually uh, uh, in the next lecture. Okay. So let's let's just see how we can solve this problem in Ample. So since he, there are two variables, we need to define them. Let's say variable x one, and it should be greater than or equal to zero, right? And the variable x two also should be greater than or equal to zero. And now instead of uh, minimizing, we need to maximize the objective function. So we should change the minimize to maximize. Okay. And the objective function now is x1 plus x2. Okay. And uh, there are two constraints. The first one is three times x1 plus four times x2. So four times you should use a star less than or equal to 24, okay? So we're done with the first constraint. Now let's write the second constraint. And also, you, know, you should know that uh, we should use different constraint names. If you use the same constraint name, it will tell, it will report an error, we, we'll see. We'll, we'll fix this bug later. The second constraint is seven times x1 plus four times x2 less than or equal to 28, okay? Uh, we can still use this solver. Okay, we need to display two variables. So when you display two, uh, two variables, you can do it like this. Display x1 semicolon. Next line, display x2 semicolon. You can also write it in this way just to put it comma x2, either works. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's solve it. Model RC example the MOD, click enter. You see, constraint name is already defined, which means you already use this name for the first constraint. You cannot use the same name for the second constraint. So you just put any name you like. Okay, let's solve it again. Okay, now we are done. So this is the optimal solution for this problem. Okay. X1 is one, X2 is 5.25. And the uh, optimal objective value is 6.25. Okay. So this is the best uh, uh, solution, okay? When we say optimal solution, we mean the best solution. You cannot find a, a solution that is better than the optimal solution. Okay. And also since we, the problem is a maximization problem, that just means you cannot find a solution that has an objective value that is greater than 6.25. Okay. okay. So no, we're done for the, for example, five. So any question about example five? Okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, I have one question. Uh, yes. So when, when we do the variables, can we just do variable x1, variable x2, and the subject put a, a greater or equals to zero to the subject? Oh uh, yeah. So you mean instead of define instead of declaring uh, the variable as non-negative, we we you know, put that as a constraint subject to x1 greater than or equal to zero. Is this what you mean? 
Yes. So this this will also work. Okay. This also work. We we can try. Let's see whether we can get the same solution. Yeah, we got the same solution. So this also works. You can define this non-negativity here when you declare a, the variable, or you can define it as a constraint. Okay. Yeah. Um. Any other question? Okay. And also for each line, at the end of each line, you, you must include this semicolon. Okay. Otherwise, it will you know, show you a, a bug. And uh, sometimes it is difficult to find, find the bug because you may have many commented lines here. Then the, the program will tell you there is a bug in this line. But when you look at it, there it looks absolutely uh, correct. So you know, the bug is actually from the previous line because you did not include a semicolon. Okay. Mm. Let's go to the next example. Example six. So very similar to the previous example, we just have one more variable. We just have one more variable. Okay, then let's define the third variable as third. And we also need to change the objective function. Now it is two times x1 plus five times x2 plus x3. Okay. Am I record? Okay. And we also need to update, update the constraints x1 plus 3x2 plus two times x3 less than 10. For the second constraint, it is two times x1 plus x2 plus five times x3 less than eight. Okay. Then can we stop? Then should, are we done? Still need to define the x3, right? The x3 also gonna be non-negative. Yes, right. Okay. Yeah, we define it here. Um, now are we done? Yeah, okay. I think we are done for this uh, example. Let's implement it. Let me first clear this window. Just clear the up arrow. So this is the solution, the optimal solution. This is the optimal objective value. Okay. And also you see this one. So this groovy 9.5.0 is just the so software version. Okay. We don't need to care about this, this version. And this is the map gap. So you see uh, map gap zero means the solution Ample tells you is uh, is absolutely the best solution. Okay, you can also find a different solution that is better than this one that has a greater objective value than seventeen point six. Okay, that that's not going to happen. Okay, if this gap is zero, but if this gap is not zero, that means that you, you may possibly find a better solution. Okay. Yes. Kind of, oh, so what, one thing um, you need to pay attention is here, you see this is the directory. So uh, if your code is not in this working directory, then you either you move the code to this folder, to this uh, directory, or you need to change it. So if you want to change it to a different uh, folder, you can just uh, do it like this, copy the, the, direct, uh, the directory, and then put copy, paste. It doesn't work. It, it usually works. Um, okay, if it does not work, then you can uh, do it 
go off, go off, then you can select which one, which uh, folder you want to set as the uh, the work uh, the work directory. Okay. Can you ref uh, can you do this refresh? If you can find it, refresh. Click click it. Yeah. So do do you see? Um. So did you type the correct file name? Uh, it it should should work. Uh, if you type the correct file, uh, if you can fix it, you know, figure it out, and you know, we can talk after class. I, I can yeah, I can help later. Um, so any any other questions about uh, example six? Okay, then let, let's look at the, the uh, next example. So as you can see here, it is not a specific example. Okay, it is not a specific example. So it actually, it represents uh, a set of uh, problem uh, problems. Okay, so so instead of uh, you know instead of uh, having the uh, coefficients uh, you know hard coded in the pro in the uh, program, you can you know instead you can use uh, coefficients use some notation. Okay, you can use some notation. So basically this example six is just one specific uh, uh, case for this uh, model, okay? You see, uh, basically this J, this I is a set of constraints. This J is a set of variables, okay? So for example six, the set of constraints is just uh, a list of two constraints. So this R group just contains two elements. For J, it uh, is a set of three variables here, okay? And this B is the, B, A, B, C, they are also, they, they are all coefficients. So for, for instance, in example six, the B1 is time, B2 is age. And uh, for, for C is the coefficient in the objective function, okay? So that, you know, you have three variables, then you would have three coefficients, C1, C2, C3. So this will be C1, C2, and uh, C3, one. And uh, for this one, so as you can see, it's a summation, summation over, over J, J, okay? So then for the first constraint, it would be a, uh, a, uh, a R1 plus a R1 times X1 plus a I2 times X2 plus a R3 times X3 less than or equal to B I. So those A would be, uh, A11 would be one, A12 would be three, A13 would be two, and A21 is two, A22 is one, A23 is five. So this A you know, is actually a, a matrix. Okay. So we can you know, actually implement this in Ample. You know, instead of using a specific uh, number, you know, some, some uh, given numbers, we can use notation. So how do we define the A, B, and the C? Let me show you. So this is how we define the coefficients. Actually, there are you no know, parameters. Parameter means uh, there are constant numbers. You know, they are they are uh, given before you solve the problem. So here we de define the three sets of coefficients a, b, and c. Okay, 
And also we, we also need to define the size. We also need to define the size. How many constraints? How many variables? Okay. So here is how we define set i. And here is how we define set j. You just put the set space i set space j semicolon semicolon. Okay. And then uh, when you define a parameter like this, okay, when you define a parameter like this, it means it's it's actually a vector of uh, it's a vector of uh, coefficients instead of a single coefficient. Okay. And for this one, you see this curly bracket. It has two sets. That just means this parameter is a two-dimension parameter. You can just you can say a matrix. And also uh, for the variable. No, previously uh, we we define variable x one, x two, and x three, right? So we declare those variables one by one. Okay, but we don't have to do it like this. What if we have a hundred variables? Do we need to do that a hundred times? We can do that, but uh, you know it's just uh, uh, it's not concise. It's not efficient. So we can do it like this. We can define variable curly bracket and the J, then this X is actually uh, a vector of variables. How many variables this X represents? It depends on how many ele elements in this uh, set J, okay? And if you want to define uh, each element of in the vector X to be non-negative, you, uh, you just put a greater than or equal to zero, okay? Okay, then uh, the, in the objective function, you know, previously it was uh, you know, 2x1 plus 5x2 plus 1x3, right? So we can write it in a different way. 2, 5, 1, a row vector times x1, x2, x3, okay? We can write it in this way, right? Then, you know, it's, we can also write it like this, sum of uh, a, a i times x i, and this i belongs to the set capital I, one, two, three, here. Okay, make sense? Then you know, we can write the objective function in a concise way, so we just put, uh, so actually we use notation C instead of A. So here is CJ times XJ, and we sum over all, all Js. We use notation J for variables. Okay. So this is how we rewrite the objective function. And this is a constraint. So previously you know, we have two constraints, right? We, we need to write them one by one. But now uh, we can just use a, a single line. We can just use a single line. So you see, so this is a constraint name. You can use any name, okay? And this means what? So this, this means there will be this number of constraints. So, so you see this represents a vector, a list of uh, variables, a vector of variables. Uh, then this will mean a list of constraints. Okay? How many constraints you is represented by this notation is actually this amount, this amount. Okay? So this is the set of constraints. And this uh, lowercase r just means uh, one of one element in the uh, set capital I, capital letter uh, I, okay? And this is the right hand value bi. And this is sum aij times xj. So this actually means you will sum this term for all j's. Actually, j represents variables here. So basically, you just sum for all variables. And you keep i being the same. So basically, it's just saying you will do this for uh, i being one, okay? And then you will do this again. 
for I being two. Okay. All right. So then you know, we are done with uh, implementing the, this you know, abstract model. You can call it an abstract model. So the question is how do we uh, you know, uh, load the data? Right. We already we use some notation to represent the the actual numbers. So how do we we need to before we solve the problem we need to assign some numbers to these parameters A B C right. So there are multiple ways to do that. So this is you know, you, you see I have I provided five options for you. Let's just look at the first one. Okay. So this is the, the, the syntax uh, for loading a data file. Oh, okay, this is the syntax to load a data file. And this is the file name. This is the file name. So example seven with, which, this one? Yes. So you no, know, this code will, uh, read the data in this file. Okay. So this is how we specify the set J, set I, and this is also how we specify uh, these parameters A, B, C. So I think this is for example five. Yeah, example five. So C is the objective. Uh, C is the coefficient for the objective function. You can say C is the objective function. Okay. Then for example five, it would be one, one, right? So you see, this is one, one. The second column. So what is the first column here? It's the set J. It's the set J. So. So this is a, a set, okay? This is a set. And uh, the set corresponds to the first column here. It just means this set has two elements, okay? And uh, then after a column, then you have the, this C parameter, parameter C. That just means this parameter C uh, has the same dimension with this set J, okay? And this will be, uh, you know, the, the second column would be the value for C, for the vector C. It's one, one. How about B? So B is uh, here, 24, 28. You see this, this is um, what? Set of constraints, set of constraints. And uh, uh, how many constraints you have? Two, right? Two, okay. And this B means it has the same uh, dimension with this set I, okay? And this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the third, uh, the last part is uh, how, we de how we define A. So A is a matrix. Then we just write down one, one. This is for uh, row, this is for column. And this is A11, A12, A21. A two two, you see, three four, three four here, and the seven four, seven four here. Okay, so then we can just uh, solve this example seven. Let's see whether we get the same solution when we, uh, you know, use this kind of code. Okay, you see, we got the same solution. Right? We got the same solution. So that means this you know, type of uh, uh, code, it also works. Okay. And what if we want to use this code to solve example six? Can we use this code to solve example six? It's the same format, form, right? C, sum of CX, different constraints, right? 
same for, you know, form. Then how do we do that? We just need to change some numbers here, right? So what, how do we change that? This J should be three rows, one, two, three, and this will be two, five, and uh, no, it's like one, five, two. And also this, we need to move it to here. Okay, I think I already did that. Yeah, here. This is for the, for example six. This is, this is the data file for example six. And for B, you, you just need to update it to be 10 eight. And this is also the A matrix, one, two, three, for the first constraint, one, two, three. And here, two, one, five, for the second constraint, two, one, five, right? Then you can solve it. So then you need to change, change this thing. So here, you, you, you load the data for example five, right? Now you need to uh, ch change it because you, you want, now you want to load the data for example six. Okay. Then you can solve it. Let's see whether we get the same solution. You see, now we get the solution for example six. Right. So, so this actually, this code is much more efficient because you just need to change the data file. You don't need to change the code. Okay. Um, this we already covered. So any, any questions about this example, especially for example seven? Okay, if not, we'll move on. Okay. Hey, I guess I have a quick question. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. When we're using the Gurobi solver, it just needs to be installed on the machine. I guess the directory doesn't oh. matter. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a good question. I forgot to show you the solver we have. So once you download the, the Ample uh, from Blackboard, you see what, you know, this is what you download. You, after you unzip it, this is uh, what you get. You see here, uh, where is the groovy thing? Um, see, groovy, you see? So the groovy solver is included in uh, this Ample software. You can also change it to C++ to uh, you know, connect uh, Baron. You know, these are just the different solvers, Nitro. No, let's try a different solver. Uh, let's try using Minos. Okay. Instead of using Groovy, we use Minos. Then we don't need this thing because this is just for Groovy. Okay. Then let's solve the problem again. So you see, uh, with this uh, Minos solver, we still get the same solution with the solution reported by uh, Groovy. So, you know, for such a simple uh, problem, uh, you know, almost all solvers they can handle, they can tell you the same solution, the best solution. But for some large scale practical uh, problems, different solvers may uh, report a different best solution because different solvers, they are implemented in different, uh, a mechanism, they, they may use different algorithm, they may use a different variation of the uh, you know, uh, typical algorithm. And also how those algorithm works, that's actually their commercial secret. Yeah. So we don't know what is inside the, the, the server. It's just like a black box. We just, we say there is a problem, I need you to solve it. Then you, you, the server will tell will tell us the solution, but we don't know how the server uh, works internally. Yeah. 
And also, you see, this is a, line, uh, a linear uh, programming problem, right? So if you change it to a quadratic uh, problem, then Groovy may not work. I think Groovy uh, only handle linear programming problems and uh, makes integer linear program problem. Mm. Now it, it becomes a quadratic uh, problem. Um, let, let's see, I don't remember whether Groovy can handle quadratic problem in which can just try it. Uh, it still works. Let's try a uh, Right, like this, more complex than a quadratic problem. It still works? No. You see, Groovy cannot handle non quadratic, non linear constraints. So, you know, there are some limitations on the server, but some other server, I think, uh, may not can handle. Let's see. Yeah, it can handle. Optimal solution is fine. But this may not, uh, if you define some variable as integer variable, it may not be able to handle. Let's see. You see, may not does not uh, you know, solve any problem with integer variable. So if any problem is integer, it will just ignore it. So you know, different solvers, they have different limitations. Um, any other question? Okay. Now let's look at the uh, slide 14. So what if we just want to solve a set of linear algebra, uh, linear algebraic equations such as AX equal to B, can you still use ample? So the, the answer is yes, we can still use ample to solve a set of equations, but it's just not you know, if, as, uh, as efficient as other uh, tools, other libraries, because ample requires an objective function, right? It's just a set of equations. There's no objective function. Then what you can do is that you can just set a constant uh, objective function, you can just uh, maximize zero. It means nothing, right? You maximize a, a constant number, it, it means nothing, but you can still set it is subject to this thing. Then it will just tell you a solution that will meet uh, the constraints. Okay. And also you can, do this for a set of nonlinear equations. Okay, example eight. So this example eight is, is to show how we can solve a set of linear equations. Okay, exam, this is example eight. So you see this is, we just define a constant number as the objective function. It just means nothing because we just want a solution for, uh, a solution that you know uh, satisfies these two constraints. Okay, then we can you know solve model example eight the mod. Then this is the solution. You see the, the objective value is zero because we just set zero as the objective function. So then the solver will just uh, find a solution. Uh, once the solver finds a solution that satisfies all the constraints, it will stop. Okay. So we can quickly summarize what do we need uh, in order to write an ample program. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, uh, is a set, okay? Because you, you know, in order to be efficient, uh, especially when your problem is quite large, you need to define some set. Set is just a list of index, right? 
you know, in the power system domain, you can define a, a bus set, you can define a generator set, you can define a load set, you know, and the parameters, okay? You, you need some coefficients. And in the you know, power system part, these parameters, they can be what? The branch uh, reactance, right? Branch resistance, um, you know, generator maximum uh, capacity, and the variables, okay? So, and the, you definitely definitely need to define some unknown uh, variables. That's uh, what you want want to solve for. So and also in some in some power system application, those variables they can be uh, generate uh, output power, right? They can be generate uh, generate on off status. Okay, whether a generator is we want we want whether we want it to be on or off in uh you know at a ten to 11 a.m. tomorrow, right? So we need a binary variable for that, either on or off. And okay, for objective function, uh, in, my, you know, in you know, power system scheduling and dispatching uh, array, the objective function is, you know, is you know, usually uh, to minimize the total cost and the constraints. And also, what constraints we may have in the power system area? We may have the, the power balance constraints, right? The total generation should be equal to the total uh, uh, load. If you can say the loss, then you need to plus loss. Okay? And you, you also need to uh, ensure your generator output power does not exceed its capacity, right? And also, you, you may also want to ensure the line flows does not exceed the line uh, thermal capacity. You know, there are many uh, constraints you need to uh, consider. And the data, you know, we definitely need, need the data. And uh, you know, we can have a separate data file. We just load the, the data file in the main code, just like what we did in this example seven. Right? So we just change one line, just change the, uh, the, data, the data file input. Then we can apply the same model for different systems, different test cases. And the solver, okay. Uh, you know, solver, we, you know, we just, we just, it's a, just a tool for us to solve the problem. Okay. Okay. Um, before we, look at some ample codes for solving some power system problems. Uh, do you have any questions uh, so far? Okay. Um, then, you know, since we still have some time, just 6.30, let's look at some DCOPF uh, code. So we haven't talked about the DCOPF yet. That's actually what we will uh, talk about in the very next lecture. Okay. But you know, we can just uh, quickly uh, go over the, the code, you know, just to learn some, um, uh, you know, a little bit more complex code. So you can download the code from this link. This is my group website. Oh, it's GitHub. And also my group has uh, some, some code you can look at as well. So we have the transmission expansion planning code, uh, you know, stochastic uh, optimal power flow, uh, N minus one unit commitment and the DCOPF. So basically it's this one. You can download it. It's open source. You download it. Uh, you open it. Okay, let's move it to our working folder. Um, maybe here. That's the end page.
Okay. Let's change the working direct. Go up. Okay. All right. Let's close these files. So th there is a readme file. So actually you see there are three MOD files. So basically it's just the three variations of the DC op uh, op uh, optimal power flow uh, model, so different uh, models. And the one model is the lossless model. It just means we do not uh, uh, consider the thermal loss. We just ignore the thermal losses. Let's, let's open it. This is the one. So, so you see, this is how we define uh, a set of bars. Basically, it's, basically it's a list of buses, or you can say it represents the bus number or bus index. And we, we have the set of branch, set of generator. So let's open the data file. So this is the bus data, the DAT. This is the file, um, the data file for buses. So as you can see, this power system has the case has uh, 73 bus, uh, buses. Okay. So it looks a bit different than what we, we saw because we, we define it here, here. Okay. So this is a different option to load the data. So you put the data and you say parameter. This is the, um, uh, the set for bus the bus set. And then, because here we have three columns, right? Then we need two additional parameters here. Otherwise it will report an error. So this just means the second column represents the bus number. The third column represents this thing. This is the load at a bus. So this, you see, we define it here, bus. No. Bus PD, PD is power demand. It's the load uh, at a bus. So basically, if you see here, it just means this is the bus index, bus number. You know, bus number, sometimes they, they, they do not, uh, they are not consecutive. They can even be a string. Um, and this is the load. So this just means at the bus one, the load is 108 megawatts. And this is a set of branch. If you open the branch data, it has more data. If we go down, you see there are 120 uh, lines. Okay, and how many columns we have? Eight, eight columns. So what they are, so uh, here, the, here, this is how we load the branch data. You see, uh, this is the branch set. Since we have eight columns, then we need seven parameters here. And each parameter should be, uh, should have the same dimension with this branch set. So they are all defined uh, here. You see, they're all defined here. And uh, you know, it, it, it they, they have the same dimension with branch. So this is the branch number. And the second, uh, the second column is the branch number. Basically, the same with the first column, branch index. And uh, the third and the fourth column from bus and the two bus. This just means for for, for branch one, it connects bus one and the bus two. Okay, and uh, this is resistance and reactance. So just means this line is resistance is 0 0.003 uh, in per unit, not in ohms. This is reactance. And this is the uh, total line charging uh, susceptance, the B value. And the last uh, column represents the long-term thermal rating, thermal capacity, 175 is megawatts. And, and you can also just define a single parameter and you can also initialize this parameter. You just say this parameter is equal to a number. And this is how you define variables. So you see this bus angle 
it's a variable uh, for the face angles. And you have, and it is a vector. You know, each bus has a, a angle variable. If you have 10 bus, then it would be, it would have 10 elements. So here you see I put K in bus. Uh, basically, you don't need this thing. You can just put a bus here. There's no difference. Okay, K in they they don't matter. So this is more like a for loop. You loop over all buses, and this is you no. Know, these are the uh, constraints. This is for the power balance constraints. This is the total generation at the bus at a bus k. This is the load at the bus k, and this is the branch power flow that uh, you know the power uh, flows into bus k. And this is the uh, lines um, where the flow uh, goes out bus k. You have the you know, generated maximum limit constraint, minimum limit constraint. You have the you know the line flow equation. Here we use DC power flow model, and this is how you respect the thermal limit. Okay, and also after you load all the data, sometimes you may need to do some data pre-processing before you. Uh, you can solve the problem because we, we normally we use per unit, right? We have to be consistent. So uh, because the, some data, some input data, they are not in per unit. So we need to first of all convert the megawatt uh, numbers uh, you know, into per unit numbers. This is a for loop. This is how you write a for loop. Okay, then this is how you solve the problem. Oh, no, this is, uh, you select a solver and you solve the problem. Okay. So this is the command to call the solver and the solver will solve the problem and re, you know, report the solution to you. So after this line, you basically, you, you are already done with solving the problem. So these codes are just uh, um, how you, pro, you know, how you, uh, uh, this is just to, to analyze the results. This is to analyze the, re the results. This is display the computing time. Display some, you know, the, the results. Okay. Let's, let's see why this works. I think it should work. Okay, model on uh, last last dcopf.mod. Okay, so it, it's pretty fast, pretty fast. It doesn't it take less than a, a second. And this is the objective function, you know, the, 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 the total uh, cost. This is the total generation cost here. And this is the face angle. So this is the ingredient. This is the gen uh, generator supply, also the generator output power. There are 99 generators and it's in per unit. If you want to convert it to a megawatt, you need to multiply by the base, uh, which is 100. This is the line flow. There are 120 lines. So you, you see it has 120 elements. Positive means the flow is uh, consistent with the reference flow direction. Negative means the actual flow direction is opposite with the reference flow direction. So how, how we define the reference flow direction? We need to look at the data. This is the front bus. This is the two bus. Then the reference direction is automatically defined as uh, the direction from bus one to bus two. Okay. And there are some other uh, DCOPF model. So this uh, is a model that considers loss, I think. The other two models, they consider loss. So how do we consider loss? They 
uh, they either they can you know instead of using the DC power flow, instead of using the DC power flow uh, equation here, you can use the AC power flow equation. But that that would be super hard to solve. You see, when we solve this problem, it takes less than a second. So, but if you use the full AC power flow model, it may take uh, one hour or two hour or even longer to solve the problem. Mm. So the, how do we include the loss? Let me see. Oh, we, we, we approximate the, the loss uh, function. Um, this is for the first, the, uh, uh, the first lossy model. For the second lossy model, we actually, we, we did it in, an, uh, we use an iterative method. We iterative solve the DC OPI problem, but with different uh, uh, load. You know, some losses, they, they are modeled as a, uh, as a load. So you see here, this is, we can write a for loop, a while loop. You know, we can repeatedly solve the DC OPI problem. And, uh, and for each iteration, we, we need to update the, we need to recalculate the loss and then assign the loss as a virtual load. Then you can solve, solve it again until the problem converges. If you, if you are interested, you can look at the model and there is also a paper for these three models. It's in the readme file. So we'll only learn this lossless model, the most, um, the basic one. Okay. Mm. So there is a, another one, but this is much more complex. There is a shell file. Most likely you don't need it. Maybe you, you need it for your cost projects. It can provide some you know, insights for you. But we, we, we don't have the time to go over this one. Okay. Um, I think that would be all for today. Before we end, do you have any question? Okay, if, if not, then we will we'll stop now. Okay.